Hey guys, uh, welcome to my first ever tutorial series. Uh, over the next few months, uh, I'll be fleshing out uh, the basics uh, programming skills as well as like intermediate things and hopefully uh, a trickle of advanced material on how to make a fully functional arena based survival game. So it's a game where you're trying to stay alive on your own, hunting for your own food, scavenging parts for crafting, uh, uh, camouflaging in the trees to kill your opponent type of game. I hope that by having the mixture of each level of programming helps those just starting off with programming, trying to learn how to do things to get acquainted of the process involved in making game let alone uh, one that is a network that allows you to play with your friends. And I hope that it inspires those already experienced with Unity and C Sharp to make their own little world uh, from what that I'm going to show you throughout the tutorial series. I generally ex would expect you to have a basic understanding of Unity and C Sharp. Though if you haven't programmed before, go ahead and Download Unity 5 and Visual Studios, the one that I code in, and the Unity is my game engine. As you can see here, this is our current two week goal. So, this is what we'll be aiming to achieve within the next two weeks. So, we go ahead and host our game here and connect with the client. So, right now, you can see on your right, uh, the character can look up. You can see them look down, turn, look left, look right, move around. Uh, you can shoot around, shoot enemies, and you can go around grappling things. And this is all networked, so I, I understand that <laughs> that grappling doesn't really have anything to do with a survival game, but I think it's a really fun little addition that just makes you stand out, I guess. So let's get started. So we go, we go ahead and open up a new project. So we'll go new, and we'll call this multiplayer arena. Then we'll call it survival arena. Make it 3D and go ahead and actually get prototyping. Generally, I don't need any of these because I make my own, but Go down here and get prototyping. Uh, create your project. This should take fairly quick, depending on your PC build. But I should say this now while this is loading that I know it doesn't look like much the uh, game that I showed you, but that's only the foundation of things is just get people started getting people interested in the game itself so let's go ahead and make our scene of where we can prototype our player scripts so we can go ahead and make our scene So once we've done that, we can go ahead and create a empty game object and for simplicity's sake, drag them all under the empty game object and call that environment. Uh, generally you do this so you can keep track of everything. Um, in this case, I want to keep all the envir environment in one game ob uh, empty game object. If you don't know what a game empty game object is, it's basically just as the name suggests, it is just an empty game object. All it has is a transform, and that is it. Um, generally, it's just used to uh, put things uh, underneath, so you can keep it all organized. And talking about organized, let's create a couple folders. Um, first, go uh, go down to. Uh, your assets box go to create and go create for uh, create folder I'm Gonna get, create two here and call one scripts and one prefabs 
you generally we're going to use more as the game progresses but for now we only need these two so we go ahead and go to go into our scripts box, uh, scripts and we're going to create a c sharp script and we're going to call this move uh let's go character movement So once it started up, we're going to go ahead and make a couple variables. These are going to be the variables that we're going to use as a speed variable for our character to move. So we're going to create, we're going to create a public int, and we're going to say we're going to have one for forward movement speed. Um, and comma, we're going to do side movement speed. And generally you don't travel as fast backwards than you do forwards, so create a separate one for that. Um, if you guys don't know the programming, you don't have to create a new line for each. So this is basically saying uh, public int and this one as well, but with a comma, uh, there's no need for that. So go down to our update function and the update is called every frame. So it is constantly going. So you generally game is at 60 frame, uh, 60 frames a second. So it's called 60 times a second. So down here, we're going to uh, check whether or not our player is pressing down the key, uh, key code. W. Essentially, this is just a boolean, and booleans are true and false state uh, statements. So, which means that the game is looking at whether or not s the specific key is true, meaning it's currently pressed down. Then, if it's true, then it's going to follow the code underneath. So, which in this case is either making the player move forward, backwards, or left or right. So this one will be determining our forward uh, forward speed. So here we're going to say the transform dot translate. So basically, this is just saying make our current transform move in our the current the direction we want. So I'll show you how to do that. And translate takes in a vector three. If you don't know what vector three is. It is these three numbers, X, Y, and Z. So we go here and say, we want to create a new vector three, another bracket. And here we're gonna say, for, the, for moving forward, we just wanna go zero on the X. We don't wanna move up, so zero on the Y. And here we wanna say forward movement speed. So, um, what I have here is a diagram. So, <laughs> I generally use a lot of diagrams to make it make people understand what is actually going on, and not just show them uh, how to write a code. So that's basic. So right here is our character. It's just it's simplified as a box. So here is the x-axis, which goes up, means and z is going away from us and x is just along the horizontal line so what we're going to be doing is say the box is at the starting point we're going to say the front of the box is the furthest away from us so it is the one that we can't see but it's over here so we're going to say when we're pressing the, uh, the forward button we want the character to go forward on the z axis and if we want it to go left, we go, well, we want to go right, we go along positive x's. If we want to go left, we want to go to the negative x's. I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so we go back to Visual Studios and we say, as it currently is, the box will travel as such. It will skip forward as many 
uh, how fast you want it to go. It would skip forward uh, depending on what you have for your forward movement speed. So what we're going to say is we want to times the number by time dot delta time which time dot delta time is basically if you add or subtract to a, to a value every frame the chances are you should multiply it by times dot delta, delta time sorry. and when you multiply it with times dot delta time you essentially express i want to move the object 10 meters per second instead of 10 meters per frame because this is called 60 uh, 60 times a second or at uh, once per frame so we want to say we just wanted to go once per second so we just wanted to smooth along instead of jumping as it would so we just wanted to smooth it and that's basically what time dot tell the time does it here so we go ahead and copy this here and we want to say this one s so we travel backwards um i just want to have these basic you can we can start uh delegating these buttons to whatever the player wants to do so but here we just have basic uh the w a s d format so here we want to do back movement speed because we're traveling backwards and this is where we put a minus because of how i said before you because you're traveling this on the positive section now we want to travel backwards which takes us into the negative numbers because here it's zero you go along this line one two three four five six but if you go this way it's negative one negative two negative three negative four and the same goes for the z and y axis so if we want to travel backwards we want to go into the negative numbers so we go back to our code here and basically copy, uh, just paste it, oh, paste this down here and we want to say A. But here we don't want to travel on the Z axis, we want to travel on the X axis. So here we want to say the side movement speed times time dot delta time and as said here again we want to travel into the negative numbers because we are uh, we, <coughs> sorry we are going left so we're going into the negative numbers and for the right for going right we want to go into the X the box is facing the same direction as we are facing the screen here so here we want to travel into the negative numbers and for the going right we just want to travel there and we go back to our game here we want to create our character really so this is the character we'll be using for just demoing so we go ahead here into the hierarchy go 3d object and create cube and a cube should spawn here um, we'll just drag him down he's not going to have a rigid body he's not going to fall down he's just going to stay in the air so we go ahead here over the one and put create a sphere and put the cube as its parent so go ahead here and just make this 0 0.8 it just looks like a funny head just compared to its body we'll just create a little smaller that should be fine and we go ahead and go back to our scripts go over our uh, uh, let's, let's name this before we forget body and this is going to be the head so we go over the body and drag over our character movement speed and here we fill out let's say 6 for the movement speed, forward movement speed 4 and let's say this one's 4 as well so we go ahead and press play and as you can see here if we go forward we go forward if we go press s we go backwards we press a we go left and press d and we go right so 
that's all for this video because it's already 20 minutes. I don't want to make this way too long, way too complicated. I just want you guys to understand what I just did. And next video will be dealing with the body rotation and making the head go up and down. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.